Now the car's been rinsed once again. Now this is a tar treatment and I'm going to literally do it all over the place. But specifically focus on to the lower parts. Now, haven't haven't done a tar treatment on this so far, even as a maintenance. So if this has got any sticky residue from anything, if it's ever had any stickers on it, obviously tar. This will knock it out. Now look at the colour of this tar remover. Ooh, it's beautiful. Now this is really important to do these steps. You may think this is overkill or a waste of product or a combination of both. However, if you are doing any sort of machine polishing, especially if you're doing a one step with a foam pad. Now listen me out on this one. This is interesting. It's extra important, especially as I said with a foam pad, because microfiber has a tendency to actually pick stuff up and either spin it out of the pad or kind of place it further down into its fibers. So you can sometimes survive for a few passes. However, a foam pad hasn't got that sort of capability. So if it picks something up, it will stay on top of the foam. And if you're doing a one step service and you're not getting the right results, it's not cutting enough, or you're marring the paint on the finishing step of the pass, then the fact is you probably got some sort of contamination in your pad and this is why this is super important i'm not saying if you're doing a full correction and you're using microfiber pads you don't need to do this you need to follow the process you may hate doing it look i'm freezing right now i'm a bit wet i'm a bit cold the light's starting to drop as you can see so it's not the best, but seriously, if you follow the process. Oh, I may have found some tar. That's a good angle. That's a big blob. But as I was saying, if you follow the process, you'll get world-class world, world results. I can vouch for that. So please guys, spend a little bit more time Use a few more products which are dedicated to a certain process and you will be in a good place. And this is specifically more kind of poignant during the, the winter seasons because as I said, it's bloody freezing and everybody wants to find the quickest solution. Now in any, in any process, the building process for example, or the carpentry process there's no easy way out well there is and that's why you get crap results right i've got enough solvent in here to bloody start world war three with a chemical warfare program It'd be interesting where's that spot on yeah look told you it was a big tar spot i thought it was look at that i've just swiped it with a finger so this car has got tar but as I said, it's hard to see. I was just at the right place at the right time with the right angle. So I've almost gone through a litre of tar remover. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get a wheel microfiber and just wipe the whole car down. In fact, I'm not gonna go for a wheel microfiber. I'm gonna go for one of our paint towels. I'll pre-saturate it and I'll just wipe the car over. And again, this step helps you knock another five, 10% of protection off, especially when you're doing it this way, when there's a bit of mechanical abrasion behind it or, or mechanical agitation, that's a better word for it. See with me, I don't think you can use ever overused tar removers during the step. And this is the reason why I first sprayed the car down so just to give it enough time to kind of break down anything and this step will well with a pre-saturated towel it will really agitate it see i'm not putting that much pressure i'm just wiping it now this is a white towel 
I've picked up a little brown spot, good sign. Now these areas I'm taking extra care of. And once you actually wipe, wipe the panel, it leaves like a little film behind so you can actually see if there's any like lumps or bumps. So the thought process behind this is, we've agitated the tar, it's always tar first and then iron, because a big lump of tar can potentially hold a big iron particle and not the other way around. So if you can get rid of this, the iron should come out easier. Or if it is holding any iron within the tall spots, you'll, um, you'll avoid kind of wasting your time in the process. There, look, you can see uh, if I'm gonna fold it. It's a pink towel now, obviously the product's pink, but you could see there's a few dark spots there. Dark, 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 dark spots here as well. So we are picking stuff up. Now what I will do, if you guys are, or if you guys have followed me from the start, if you remember me doing the Mustang correction series, because it was a lighter color car, it was even easier to actually spot anything, but you saw there was no tar on. Even when I went to clay, there was no contaminants. Now, I do this step probably once in a lifetime of the car in terms of the tar removal with the wiping of it. After this, I will literally just spray it on, let it dwell for as long as possible, five, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the weather. And I'll rinse it off and I'll do this probably quarterly. Now people are gonna say that's overkill. Yes, it is. But what is overkill is having to clear the car twice a year. So if you can use a little bit of touchless power, it's better. Same goes with the iron. In fact, I'll probably do the iron once a month, seeing as what type of car this is. This is gonna be kicking out some serious brake dust. Now, yes, the protection will help. However, eventually something will have to get embedded. Now I'm gonna do a quick rinse of this, just to try and get 95% of it off. So I'll do this as quick as possible. I am losing light really quickly. And then we're gonna follow up with an iron step. We've done a basic rinse. There might still be a little bit of a residue, which we'll handle in a second. But now onto the iron step. I recommend you use your wheels. It is very, very potent, very, very strong. Now again, you can't be too liberal with this. I'm almost out anyway, so I need a new bottle soon. And to be honest, I think this is the more crucial step, only because of the type of car that it is. And there's normally more iron than there is tar, usually, depending on where you live and how you drive it. So again, because this is a gel base, this will stick, but then eventually it will start to roll because of the weight of the gel. And this will start going down the car, picking up other bits, so on and so forth. All right, that's bottles out. And like with the previous step, I will do this actually even more often than the tar steps. only because this car gets driven hard, it gets driven fast. And even if the car is super duper protected, it will still have stuff eventually embed itself in a clear coat. Now I'm not gonna use the towel method to wipe it down, but if I was to do it with a white towel again, you would see a lot of purple. So usually the the more horizontal panels, like what I'm doing now, is the bonnet, the boot, the roof, get more embedded than, than average. And also after this, after the other rinse, after we rinse this off, we will do a, another strongish dilution of foam, and this will kill any residue that's left. I could wash this again, but then, because I want to 
have you guys see everything that I do. I'll be out of light in about 40 minutes. But you get the process. We'll let it dwell for as long as humanly possible. And this will actually probably hit the cracks and remove the iron deposits of this product from where the water couldn't because the foam's thicker and it can have a bit more dwell time. It'll be impossible to see anything with black paint. But when we rinse this, in fact, on the floor here, drop, 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 it's all purple. So it is pulling something. And this will be even more evident once you start to rinse anything under these sills or any of the drain holes, you'll actually see this bleed like crazy. But this is why Yum Wheels, again, this is why, to be fair, it's not just Yum Wheels, just with the brand itself. This is why we try and create and beat everything else because you can use Yum Wheels as a wheel cleaner and the wheel cleaner will hit two parts of the wheels that no the wheel cleaner can hit. You can then use it as the decon step. So rather than buying three products, so a foaming wheel cleaner, a fallout remover, well, two products, but you use it on two different steps, on the wheels as a decon and on the paint, you're actually buying more products, wasting more money where you can have a one true product that can do it all. And the degreases within the wheel cleaner will actually help and aid in the removal of any protection or knock it a bit. So the plan after the final foam, what we're going to do is we're going to rinse the foam off. This will be the longest um, rinse that we do. And then we're going to get it inside. I'm going to dry the car off actually, um, because by the time I get finished, it'll be later on. And then we'll film and then, and then we'll proceed with the mechanical decon via the clay block and the detail spray on tomorrow. And that actually gives the time for the car to air out or gas off as I call it. So anything in the cracks where your air won't get to, it'll take the night to kind of seep out. And, and then actually that way we'll get a bit more friction. So on this car, I won't put as much detail spray on because I actually don't want the clay block to glide as effectively as I would on a lowly contaminated car. So we'll obviously still lubricate the panel, but we'll let the block have a bit more bite to where this is what I mean you can manipulate a product it's the same clay block if you use too much detail spray it will sort of skip over imagine a rock it'll skip over the rock which is a contaminant but if it has a bit more bite and aggression it'll it should pick it up so that's why I won't probably do it on a wet car but usually I will do it on a wet car yes did you hear that guys? New member signed up. So let's give it one last foam for good measure. And I'm gonna really focus on the pressure in. So again, so I've got some Yum foam mixed in, 100 mil, standard solution this time. And I'm just gonna foam this. I'm not gonna film me rinsing it, but I'll catch you, I'll catch you on the inside when we're doing the actual mechanical clay step. Right guys, so now I'm gonna do the final step of the decom process, and this is commonly referred to as the mechanical step. So we did the chemical step, so it's touchless, and the mechanical step is where you, the paint is touched. So I'm gonna use my hands. Um, so when you get to a stage like this, you've got a couple of options. You can either do the traditional clay bar, which has been around for a very long time. It's highly effective. You know, there's a lot of benefits, but there's a lot of cons to it as well. And where the technology has now moved and it's starting to get really exciting for people like us where you can actually get through a car a lot quicker, safer, you know, all these type of things. So we're going to be using synthetic clay. Now synthetic clay can come in towels, blocks, mitts, a host of different things. Now on this part of the decon, I'm actually going to show you one of our new um, products, which will, will be available fairly soon as well. So this is kind of a sneak peek. The world hasn't seen this product yet. Nobody has a clue of what it looks like, what it does, but today's the video. So we've got our clay block. Now, over the last couple of years, we've been testing mitts, pads, cloths, sponges, all these sort of things, which have got some sort of synthetic clay attached to it. Now, with this block, in terms of ergonomics, it's a lot easier to use if I'm, this is just my opinion, a lot easier to use and also 
not all clay blocks are made the same. There are some cheap ones, there's some medium ones and some very expensive ones. And usually in the clay block game, the more pricier ones are 100% better than the cheap ones you can buy for like four quid. The reason is the synthetic clay grade is a lot more premium. It's a lot stronger, it's a lot safer, but also just as simple as the, the laser cutting of the clay. So on this one, it is sharp, as you will see in a second. The edges are perfectly done. There's no overhang, there's no thread. And when you're working on cars like this, you're working on your personal pride and joy, you want the best. So this is what I believe currently of 2021 is the best. Um, so it's gonna come with one pad. We thought about doing um, a pack with a replacement pad as well. But at the time we're just trialing obviously what the market feel is. So we've got a lot of these in single kind of pad block kind of you know uh, packages and maybe in the future if people are saying look like a professional especially i'm going through like 10 cars a week and i'm clean we might introduce a secondary replacement block but i'm going to unpack it now so this is the first pack so obviously oh almost a heavy accident so obviously on here you're going to see there's instructions how to use it how to look after it and within here as well you've got your replacement block so I'm going to walk in a bit close and show you guys. So, as you can see, just look at the cuts. They're really, really good, especially on this side as well. So let me just attach this real quick. The cutting of it, it's just sharp, it's effective. Now, it's, this is done on a Velcro system, so you can actually attach this. It, it can get wet and it won't de-peel itself. Now, when you first unpack any sort of synthetic clay, it's quite tacky, it's quite gummy. Now, they put a special kind of release and bonding agent on here and you'll feel a little bit slick. So I will recommend that with anything brand new, especially synthetic clay, you break it in, that's the term, break it in on the glass because glass is a whole different consistency to paint and glass does not mar as easily. Now, like I said in the video, I could have done this outside I could have obviously rinsed the final um, iron remover off and gone in straight with the clay, which is normally the procedure that I do. However, if it's a super windy day, or like in this case, I was dropping light, I didn't want to be doing this in the dark. This step is probably one of the most um, important steps within the process, because you don't want to miss a single thing. So I brought it in. Now, instead of using water and the Yum wash as a lubricant, I'm going to use the Yum detailer. Now, a lot of people, especially when you're talking in the summer months, you don't want to potentially foam the car with Yum wash. And if the car's heavily contaminated, obviously you're gonna take your time and you don't want towards the rear of the car, the product, if it takes you imagine 45 minutes, you don't want something sat drying out for 45 minutes. This is where the Yum detailer can come in. You can do it panel by panel. So you can really focus on the areas. Now, I have used, personally used the Yum detailer since the start as the clay lubricant because as the people who've used this will know it leaves behind a very nice slickness now what you want is the slickness especially on the paint to help the block the clay whatever you use glide now again i'm going to put a bit more pressure behind this than i normally would on the paint now the reason for this is just expedite my process of breaking this thing in a little bit quicker. Now I've got big hands and either things are too big for me or too small for me. Now, this is just, a, in fact, it's got one, two, three. So it's got three little grooves to where it helps you hold the block perfectly now i can go right towards the edge because like i said the cut is really nice you can literally follow the contour of the car quite well now it's interesting because i know certain parts of this car don't worry this is glass um i never lean on paint but certain parts of this car are going to be really bad as you've seen from the tar step it is picking up tar now if there's certain bits that I've missed with the tar, this will pick it up. Like, especially if you're doing this on glass, you can look, you can go in circles, 
straight lines, left and right, up and down, doesn't really matter. Now on paint, I would usually recommend just going straight lines because it's just habit. You're building a habit there. That way you don't do a swirling motion with anything else like towels or wash pads. Oh yes, that's where you want to feel. You want to feel baby-like smoothness on this. Now over the weekend, I was in here on my own and I was just starting to assess the paint off camera just to see what I can do when the time comes. Now what I noticed, I had towels on this car. Now hopefully you'll be able to hear this. One second, let me fold up. Now if you listen to the mic, I'm gonna try and get it in closer. You can hear the towel there. Now, I did a little test panel here. Now listen to this. You can't hear it now. I know there's a better area. Yeah, you can, there's a huge, huge difference. Now with a detail spray, like I said, if you work in areas, just wipe it off. Now, now don't go crazy with it, doing the 54 drying towel method, because after this, I'm gonna IPA the car anyway. So I wanna then make sure the surface is completely naked. Because every product has the potential of leaving something behind. So if you see a streak or two, don't go nuts. <laughs> because in about 15 minutes, you're gonna be re-wiping the car anyway. Now, usually by the time you do the front part of the glass, so part of the windscreen, your clear block should be broken in. But luckily I've got the roof, which is complete glass as well. I'm gonna just, on the safe side, I'm gonna clear the roof as well. So basically try and do as much of the glass components of the car as you can with a brand new block. But after this, I'm just gonna work it in in order that I like to, so I'll start with the bonnet. Now, like I said, over the weekend, I have been practicing, well, not practicing, I've been assessing the bonnet and I've been just tweaking the process. Now, I'm gonna film the test spot because I'm still not convinced even now, after four hours of doing test spots, now what I have found is the pain correction side of it is not a problem. No pain corrections are ever a problem. Now the problem I'm finding here is, um, is residue management because especially on the bonnet where the test spots were happening, I'm pulling this white film. So imagine this is the film. So I'm pulling that into the pad whilst also trying to overwork the compounding kind of step, you know? And the residue is, is impacting the work time, it's impacting the compound. So that basically means in real life terms that I'm going to the door and back a lot more often to blow the pads out. Now, what'll be interesting is on video, I'm gonna do a test spot on a non-flat part of the car and because obviously it's not as bad, 100% not as bad on there. And then we'll see if my issue is only on the bonnet and the boot or if it's on the whole car. So that's the whole point of doing a test spot. I've only done a test spot on one part of the car and I'm gonna try and do a test spot on as many parts of the car as I can because then it'll give me a good indication if I'm doing the whole true car in a certain combination or am I chopping and changing all the time? So yeah, I'm happy with that. While I'm here, I might as well just do the rear glass and then I'm gonna work in my normal order. So obviously the clay block now feels slightly less grabby, which is a good sign. I think after this part, we're gonna be ready for, for the painted mechanical stuff. So as you can see, I've got large hands and look, I'm not putting any pressure on here. I'm just letting the, the pressure and the weight of my arm 
be the main kind of pressurizing part. I mean, obviously you can hammer it down, but there's just literally no need. Clay has always worked on speed and friction rather than pressure. Get it right to that edge. People think, oh, if I, if I put more pressure down, I'm gonna get rid of more contaminants quicker. That's not the case. You need to be doing like this, backwards and forwards. I mean, look, the mic's here. There's literally no sound now. Whereas, just out of interest, if I was to put it on, on the boot, let's have a look. Look, you can hear it. So that's interesting. You can actually hear and obviously you free the camera, you can't feel this, but you feel all the crunchies and all the bumps and stuff to where finally you won't be able to feel a thing, especially through your hands. Or what I like to tell people who always ring me up for advice, I say, look, just make sure the car's wet and clean. In this case, it's wet and clean, close your eyes and feel it. I know this looks very creepy, especially if you're in your driveway, people will think you're weird or however, the underside of your fingers where your fingertips are is one of the most sensitive parts on the body. And this is why obviously I always say, look, just feel it with your hands and dictate and if you've got serious contamination now. If you look like a weirdo, who cares? At least your car will be smooth. <laughs> As I said, don't worry. You're gonna be IP in the car after this anyway. You don't want anything inhibiting your pads potentially. Cause trust me, when you've got enough surface stuff that you're gonna be pulling off, the last thing you need to be doing is chasing your tail if you've got any more stuff. So. Let's move back into the bonnet and start from the order I normally start things. So, the bonnet from day one, I knew was the first or the worst part on the car, hands down. I could see it when I picked the car up. Now, <laughs> the offer was there to get the car detailed, which obviously I declined politely because there would be, well, first of all, nobody will do it as good as me. Secondly, there'll be no video series. So I thought, nah, I wanna do it myself. And the more I work on this car, the more I regret that decision. <laughs> oh, listen, there, what is that there? I can feel it. Look, there's a big piece there, but now yeah, it's gone. I wonder if you'll be able to see it now. But the beauty of this is, you know, if I was to just to go and drop it on the ground now, a traditional clay bar would, would be uh, destined to go in the bin. Whereas this, you just give it a rinse under warm water um, and you're back in business really. Again, but there's a piece here which I've seen. Now I've tried to polish over it. Look, you can hear it. Um, try to polish over it, and I don't know what it is. It's almost like a pain imperfection. Yeah, but like as I was saying, the more I do this car, the more, <laughs> the more I regretted the decision. So. <laughs> If Ben's watching, he'll be laughing, who sold me this car from Sterling. But, um, yeah, but at the end of the day, no matter how much I moan about this, I love what I do anyway. So, I mean, I love this process. Sometimes I hate it, but I know when it's done, I'll, I'll be happy, you know. And it's black as well, it's my favorite color. Um, a lot of people are saying you've made the worst decision of your life getting a black car. Yes, potentially, but you know, it's, it's going to be, I think, quite fun. There's another crunchy bit here. That's a bit of localized. I don't know what that is. 
if anything is ridiculously bad, I think that might be a chip, but the microfiber pads will obviously knock it out super quick anyway, but you'll be looking at obviously about 99.9%. .9%. That's what you're trying to achieve is just to get the most cleanest surface you can. Um, prior to you doing any sort of kind of corrective work, but also depending, this is the beauty of of synthetics. So speak to anybody, look, clay is still the king, like a hundred out of a hundred percent. Clay is the one still, you know, you can mold a little piece off like this and you can go into the handles, all that sort of stuff. Um, if you do it well as well, it is, you know, you can get a true 100% um, kind of decon removal, which you can with this. Now, the problem with the, with the real clay is, we see how slick that is, yeah, boy. Um, so, the thing with clay blocks, or let's just say synthetic clay, because they come in different shapes and sizes, is the surface area is larger. And look at this, you can't do this with clay. You know, you can go up like this super quick. It's almost like a wash pad. And also, it's the whole reusability now. It also depends car to car now. If you're gonna be claying the worst cars in the world where they haven't been claimed for 50 years, yes, the clay block will die fairly quicker than kind of it's supposed to. But if you were just to, you know, let's say you're doing your car once a year, or every time it needs it done, which is the more accurate one. Um, this has got potential of up to 30 clays or up to 30 cars. Whereas a clay bar, you'll never get that, ever. So these are slightly more expensive than clay, a few pounds more. However, with the whole safety aspect of it and the, and the versatility, it, this is where clay is starting to really fall back on. and if the only saving factor for clay is you can mold it under the door handles, I'd rather take this off and put it under the door handles, you know? Because obviously you can't put that, because this is like a hard, I think polyurethane or something like that. So you can't mold it. So yeah, I mean, I think clay has advanced so much and it's so safe now as well. If you, use the light, if you use the right lubricant and you've done the right uh, chemical decom prior to it and you're not dragging just junk all over the joint. Now in the next episode, I can't wait to bring you in a bit closer to this paint. It may look amazing on camera. Let me have a look. Yeah, it may look good on camera. If you've got a sharp eye, you may see a few spots here and there, but when you're stood completely above because we've got such nice lights, it's a whole different world whole different world now if this looks good on camera wait until we're applying the protective steps towards the end of this episode um, towards the end of the series it will look like sheer glass uh, you've seen me clear a few parts of the car i am not going to bore you and walk around the whole car and clay it i'm going to do the rest of camera and i will see you guys on the next episode which is going to be um the test spot episode which is I think the most important step or pre-step before polishing. Clay is important, yes, decon is important, but the whole, the whole test spot is, is vital because a car like this could potentially take 40 hours of polishing time. So if you can get the right step or the right combination of pads, you could save yourself 20 hours. Imagine you can go from 40 to 20. So I'll spend a couple of hours doing test spots. I'll film it, obviously I'll show you. And then once we decide on the right combination, we're gonna just go we'll do like a blanket punishment on the car, hopefully. Um, hopefully it's the same combo and then we'll go into the nicer things. But I'll see you guys in that episode and I'm gonna continue going to clear the other parts of the car. Take care.